There are people who say that the best thing for our gut is fermented food. Do you agree with this? Yeah, fermented food. Uh, I don't know about the best thing. It's certainly a beneficial thing, and it's, it, it's not a harmful thing at all. Fermented foods are, are really quite interesting because they're plant foods, right, that have been broken down. That's what all the fermentation has done. So they've been partly digested outside of the body. And what we know about the digestion of plant foods that occurs within our body, especially in the colon, is that our, the microbiota in our microbiome will consume what we eat, and then they will uh, produce metabolites. And some of these metabolites are positive and some are negative. The ones that are positive, though, are, are those that are sort of fermentation byproducts. So when I think about fermented foods, I think it would be really interesting for uh, somebody to do an analysis to tell us what are the microbial metabolites that are, say, in um, some of these krauts. And people are fermenting all kinds of things these days. Cabbage, of course, is the classic, but you can do beets, and you can do carrots, and you can do um, other kinds of, of root crops or, or even leafy things. So I think that what we have in these fermented foods, and part of what their benefit comes from, is, first of all, the, the foods themselves, they're not all the way digested. So in they come into our body, make it down to the colon, and the microbiota continue to consume those. But what we're also bringing into our bodies with these fermented foods are some of these medicinal compounds. And it, some, people, some people swear by these compounds. I think that we don't have a complete understanding of what all these compounds are and what they are doing. And you sort of also have to ask yourself, because fermentation is such an ancient, um, it's an ancient practice and it's an ancient, fermented foods are such an ancient part of the human diet. If they were bad for us, we would have figured this out thousands of years ago and we wouldn't still be consuming many of these things, whether it's, you know, fermented dairy, fermented fish, fermented vegetables, you name it, every culture's got something that they're fermenting. And I, I kind of think that's, that's also how um, microbes kind of latched on to us because as soon as we got these foods going, you had these cultures of microbes. And so we, we, we humans a long time ago began this symbiosis outside of our bodies um, through preparing and eating uh, fermented foods. And the other thing that fermented foods do, which is pretty interesting, is they bring microorganisms into our body. And you'd probably have to sit here and eat kraut 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get really significant populations into us. But we are bringing some microorganisms into our body and those may be sticking around for a while and, and sort of repopulating our gut. So that's, that's another advantage. So I think, and of course, many fermented foods have, have wonderful flavors and can add, you know, zip and punch and, and everything to food. So I think, I think there's definitely a lot of benefits to them. You say that most of a person's microbiome resides in the digestive tract. Uh, which part and why is this significant? Yeah. So let's talk about the digestive tract for a minute, because a lot of people sort of, you know, unless you're a gastroenterologist or something like that, a lot of people just sort of think, oh, it's kind of the same from top to bottom, and it does this and that. But there's really different things going on in the different places of our digestive tract. So let's start up at the top here. Um, in comes the food, descends down into the stomach, this kind of, you know, sack bowl shaped thing. That's where a lot of the initial breakdown of our foods occur. It's, it's very acidic in the stomach. And you'll oftentimes see these, these images, graphics of all of these bacteria in the stomach. And that's actually incorrect. It's quite acidic and there are not a lot of bacteria in the stomach. And the reason for that is that our bodies have figured out that if there are any pathogens in the food, you wanna zap them right away. Into the stomach they come, 
There's that acidic environment kills off a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of things, including these pathogens. The, the partly digested food then descends down into the small intestine. So whenever you see those figures of a digestive tract, there's like sausage kind of looking loops, that's the small intestine. Food passes um, into that part and it just continues digestion, the breakdown process. And F, you know, it, it's, it's a, a lot of length in our small intestine. So things are moving along, moving along, and get to the lower reaches. And by that time, most of the food that we've eaten is broken down to the point where these nutrients are exiting out of the intestine into our blood, being taken off to wherever they're needed in our body. So that is the case with uh, simple carbohydrates like sugars. These are small molecules, easy to break down. That's the case with proteins, whether meat protein or plant protein. And that's also the case with fats. But there's one kind of food that we do not have the, uh, the genes that make these enzymes to break down this, this, this sort of fourth category of food. And that is fiber, also known as complex carbohydrates or whole plant foods. And what, what we know about the microbiome and how this relates to the digestive tract is that most of our microbiome, of our whole body, of everywhere, is, is not in the stomach or not on the outside of our bodies. It's in the colon, the lion's share of our microbiome. So all of these foods that, that land in the colon poorly digested, you really need to think of your colon as sort of like tranquil grazing pastures for all of these microbiota, because they're consuming and breaking down these whole plant foods. And that's why it's really important that we distinguish between these different parts of the digestive tract, because what also happens in the colon is that once these plant foods are, are, are broken down, a bacterium is just like any other life form. It excretes waste products, only we need a whole new word for this term waste product because these compounds have a medicinal value in our bodies. One, one, one compound that's fairly well known um, is called butyrate. And so the feedstock, meaning plant foods come into the human body, they're digested in the colon by the microbiome. Butyrate is one of these waste products. Another word, if you ever hear it, is microbial metabolite, okay? That's just exiting the microbe's body. And butyrate, it turns out, is an energy source. It's sort of like an all-around tonic, as well as an energy source for our cells that line our colon. So the colon's a hard-working place. It never shuts down. You have cells constantly regenerating, doing their thing. And so what you want is you want a really nice energy source for those cells. So you don't want any abnormal cell growth. You don't want any irregularities because that's sort of the, the, that's setting the stage for cancer and other problems. So as long as you have your microbes that are getting the food that they can produce butyrate and a bunch of other compounds from, then that keeps our body, it keeps our colon in good shape. And it's actually thought that, that up to 40%, say the molecules and compounds circulating in my body, your body, people who are watching this, they were not made by our human cells. They were made by a microbial cell. And so some people think, oh, I'm creeped out. Some people think, like I'm a biologist, I think, wow, that's kind of cool. That's pretty interesting. What are these compounds and what are they doing? So butyrate is one. Another one that's made in the gut um, is a neurotransmitter that travels out of our gut and up to our brain. It's a neurotransmitter serotonin. And this affects, are we happy? Are we sad? What is our mood? So there's, there's still much, much about the microbiome that we need to learn in terms of the metabolites that are being made in the colon uh, and, and other places and how they exit the digestive tract and how they're influencing and impacting the rest of our bodies.